Welcome back. My name is Anand and you're watching Young Physicist. You ask me the question, what is the spin? Spin is one of the most important and confusing thing in quantum physics. The best answer that I can give to you is, spin is an intrinsic property of any elementary particle like the mass and the charge, which tells you that certain elementary particles have inbuilt internal motion. When the particle is born or the particle is created, the particle have definite amount of internal angular momentum, which we call the spin. Did you understand what is spin? No? Stay connected with me and watch this video till the end. I'm going to explain in detail what spin actually is. Obviously, the idea of spin came to our mind by knowing the motion of planets around the sun. You know, our earth is not static. It's revolving around the sun with an average speed of 30 km per second. The revolution of the earth is described by one physical quantity known as orbital angular momentum. Earth is not just revolving around the sun, it's rotating. It's spinning about an axis which passes through its center. Now the spinning of the earth is described by another same kind of physical quantity known as spin angular momentum. If I was to remove the earth from its orbit and take it to the place where there is no interaction, then definitely both orbital angular momentum and the spin angular momentum of the earth will become zero. because both the momenta associated with the motion of the earth are not the intrinsic property of the earth. They are because of uh, earth's gravitational interaction with the sun and with other planets. Let's go to the atomic world. According to Bohr, the model of an atom is similar to the model of our solar system where electrons are revolving around the center of an atom which we call the nucleus. Initially, we thought that the electrons are only revolving around the center of the atom. Later on, we realized that electrons might be spinning, right? There is spin angular momentum associated with the electrons. In 1925, two scientists, Ullenberg and Gottsmith, suggested that in addition to the orbital angular momentum of an electron inside uh, an atom, there should be spin angular momentum of the electron. It means the electrons are not only revolving around the center of an atom, but they are also spinning. They are also spinning about an axis. The difference between momenta of the earth and the momenta of electrons is that the momenta of the earth is continuous. They can have, it can have any value from zero to infinity. But the momenta of electrons are quantized. They have certain possible values. In 1928, one of the giant of physics, Paul Dirac, on the basis of relativistic quantum mechanics, showed that the spin angular momentum or the magnitude of spin angular momentum associated with one electron can be given by this formula where capital S represents the magnitude of spin angular momentum of the electron and small s is what we call the spin quantum number and he successfully uh, derived using uh, complicated mathematics that this spin uh, quantum number for an electron is half. By knowing the value of spin quantum number for an electron, we can calculate the magnitude of spin angular momentum associated with an electron and it comes out to be under the root of 3 divided by 2 h bar, where h bar is called reduce Planck's, quant uh, Planck's constant and it is the unit of spin angular momentum. The spin is the short name for spin angular momentum and the spin quantum number is when you skip the unit from spin angular momentum then it became it become the spin quantum number
you know all the elementary particles are assigned this number spin quantum number which tells you how much uh, spin angular momentum is associated with that particular elementary particle for example for electron it is half for proton it is half for neutron it is half also oh wait 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 we remember from our high school that the angular momentum is a vector physical quantity so it means the spin angular momentum or orbital angular momentum has to be a vector physical quantity any vector has the three components x-axis x component y component and the z component so if you want to know the exact direction of any vector then you have to know all three components of the vector at a point at the same time right but it becomes impossible in quantum mechanics to know exactly the value of or the, the component of spin angular momentum along x-axis, y-axis and z-axis simultaneously at the same instant of time. According to Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, if you know the, uh, the uh, spin angular momentum along x-axis, then you can never know the component a spin, comp a spin angular momentum of that electron along y-axis and z-axis. You can exactly know the spin angular momentum associated with an electron only along one axis and for the rest of two other axes there will be uncertainty, there will be big uncertainty in knowing the spin angular momentum. The axis about which you exactly know the spin angular momentum is sometimes called the z-axis. You can call it x-axis, y-axis, any, any name uh, you can give. But in most of the literature and in most of the books, it is called the z-axis. As I have already told you that the spin angular momentum for an electron is quantized. So by the use of simple mathematics, we were able to know that only two orientation are possible for spin angular momentum for the electron. These orientations are at an angle of uh, 55 and 125 degree with respect to the z-axis. We have now understood that there are two possible orientations of a spin angular momentum for an electron. These different two orientations are sometimes called the up or down spin, plus half, minus half or anti-clockwise, clockwise, right? The meaning is there are two possible orientations of spin angular momentum for the electron. Pauli's exclusion principle says inside an orbital the two electrons those two electrons will have two different orientation they cannot have the same orientation of spin angular momentum. The summary of this video is that any particle which is free from any interaction can have its internal angular momentum. The value of that internal angular momentum can be given by a number which we call spin quantum number. Now if you multiply the spin quantum number of that particle with h bar, that will give the value of spin angular momentum along one axis. Remember it is only along one axis because we cannot measure, we cannot know the value of spin angular momentum along all three axes. If you have further any doubt, you can ask me in the comment section or you can contact me through my Facebook channel by the name of Young Physicist. If you like my video, please like, comment and share the video and please subscribe my channel young physicist thank you very much